So let's talk about case studies, because this is a big one for me. And the candidates I find who do really well turn up to interviews with case studies of deals they've won. And I'll explain why. Go back to the last really big purchase that you personally made. Was it a camera like the one I'm looking at now? Was it a car like the one that sat outside this studio? Why do you buy it? Why? I'll tell you why. Was it something you read? Was it something you saw? Was it something you heard? Was it the feel of your hand on the leather of the steering wheel of the car? As I've already said in these videos, I like to watch YouTube videos before I make a purchase. I bought a camera gimbal earlier on this weekend for shooting video for Inward Revenue Consulting. As you know, we like to shoot a bit of video. And I must have watched 20 YouTube videos before I made that purchase and knew it was the right one. And I'm going to use it this afternoon. It's in a box in my car. Hiring a salesperson is high involvement, but the, remember the customer doesn't get to watch YouTube videos. He doesn't get to go on Digital Photography World and read a review of the latest Dave Smith candidate. He doesn't get that. The candidates who get the jobs emotionally take the client and the hiring manager through that place. The next bit. Most experienced professionals don't know how they do what they do, as they are what we call unconsciously competent. So if you're going for an interview and a client asks you to talk them through a deal, which is very common, what most people do is they go very, very surface level. Oh, well, how did you win that? Oh, well, I built a good relationship. Well, how did you build a good relationship? What was it specifically you did in the process of winning that deal that made the relationship as good as it has. So most people very rarely demonstrate the value they add to a deal. And clients will always ask you to talk through a deal and let's do it again. Two candidates in the frame. Candidate one turns up and says, yeah, I won that deal. It was a really good deal and we built a good relationship with the client, but he doesn't really fully articulate where it was that he personally added value. The other candidate turns up with a documented case study. I thought you'd want to talk about one of my deals, Mr. Hiring Manager. Therefore, what I did in advance was prepare a couple of case studies of deals I've won that we could talk through today that best exemplify how I make the difference as to whether a deal has or hasn't been won. Here, let me talk you through this deal right now. And out of his briefcase or out of his portfolio comes this case study where he shows how strategically he mapped the deal. I had one candidate a while ago, I thought it was very, very elegant. He turned up at an interview with a folder full of Miller Hyman blue sheets. And the client said, what's this? And he said, well, whenever I get a deal on the go above a certain value, every Monday morning I write a blue sheet for that deal. I start from scratch and I rewrite it based on the previous one from the week before and then I keep them. So chronologically I can look back as to how I'm progressing through managing that deal to its conclusion. Believe it or not, he got the job versus the guy who pitched up and tried to give him a bit of the old magic. The value add, let's think about that. I was talking to a client the other day and they interviewed a guy who was ex-IBM. The point the client made to me was he said, I like the guy, he seems really good, but I can't quite work out whether the deals are because of him or because he worked for IBM. And these are big deals we've won. And I need a guy who, if he gets run over by a bus the next morning, I need that to be a disaster, not just a another swappable guy who's representative of a brand. So the point that the clients are looking for is, and again, it's an unconscious thing. Hiring managers don't know that they're looking for the layer of value add that you bring to the deal, but they are. It's subconscious. No one's trained them how to do interviews. But what they're actually looking at when they ask you to talk them through a deal is they want to see where you've exerted influence, where you've exerted difference, where you've made a change in the outcome of the sale itself. And often we meet a lot of people, you know, let's get it right. The market is bloody good right now. IT is hot. Software is hot. Technology is hot. And as somebody once famously said, a rising tide floats all boats. Everybody's boat floats. The question is, are you a boat that makes a difference or are you just part of the rising tide? And when people, the really great jobs are handed out, they get handed out to the guys that customers and clients look at and think, this guy, this guy's the difference between hit and target and not. So what I want you to do is think about two or three 
deals that you've won and I want you to prepare written, documented case studies of how you won them. Now, different people do it in different ways. I have one candidate do it the other week where he prepared three beautiful looking mind maps, which he pulled out of his portfolio, put on the desk, and the client leaned over the desk, and the candidate leaned over the desk, and they talked through the deals. And he showed, you know, very visually where the hotspots were. I had another candidate do it where he just prepared three PowerPoint slides. Personally, I don't like the three PowerPoint slide idea. I don't like people to turn up with written printed PowerPoint slides. And I particularly don't like people to turn up and boot up their laptop in a first interview. It's a shit idea, frankly. So me, written, documented case studies in a folder, old school. You know, they're called site sellers when I first came into sales. We used to have this thing when I worked at Parcelforce where in the days before laptops, believe it or not, you'd flip over the, the, the thing to present to people so that they could see your documentation and your proof. But it's a very powerful, very analog, very physical thing to use in a selling situation that's as emotive and as highly charged as selling your services to a client and the client selling their services to you. So what to think about in a case study? Who was the client? How was the deal instigated? If you're going for a new business job and your top three deals and case studies are deals that came off metaphorically the fax machine or came from marketing or were booked for you by an SDR, are you really a killer new business guy? Well, it might be that you're a killer new business guy providing somebody provides you with leads, but are you really demonstrating your ability to generate new opportunities? What was the value of the deal? How long was the campaign? Who were the stakeholders involved? How did you compete with the other competitors? What was your competitor's strategy? What was your strategy and why did you win? Why? What was it that you personally did? Not what the team did. I hear it a lot when we're working on this with candidates and the, where the clients will be concerned. They'll say, oh, I was talking him through a deal and he, his only real answer as to why he won the deal was because he'd built a good relationship. Well. I mean this in the nicest possible way, and I rant about this a lot on LinkedIn. It's taken as read that you've built a good relationship. You're in bloody sales, for God's sake. It's your job to build good relationships. The real question is, what did you do around that relationship that exerted influence? That's the bit for which you get paid the real bucks. The other thing that will kill you quicker than a bullet in the head is, talking about we, we did this, we did that. It immediately says to the client that you did not lead that deal. If you can demonstrate structure in your approach in these case studies where necessary, if you're Miller Hyman trained, Taz, Spin, it doesn't matter if you're trained in the most obscure sales methodology on earth. If you follow a methodology and you have method in your madness, clients want that. They want to know that what you've got is repeatable and scalable in you as an individual and as a hire. And it should be demonstrated in these case studies. And finally, one more reiteration. They should be in written format, in a folio that you can take out of your bag in the interview. Because when the client says to you, well, what I'm looking for is somebody who can talk me through a couple of deals now. You can say, I thought you'd want to talk through a couple of deals today, Mr. Customer. Let me show you a couple of examples of deals I've won.